All right. Uh, let's go into the U.S. Open. So uh, we did it for the Masters and the PGA, and we're going to do it for the U.S. and the Open Championship. And that is a week early. We're going to take a look at the futures odds. I mean, we've actually been doing this the last few weeks, but we will kind of dive in and, and go over some early trends and players where the odds might change. Now, there, there are, of course, players playing this week that will be participating uh, next week in the U.S. Open, and that's where the odds will probably change the most. Um so let's take a look at some of the, some of those players. So w when you're taking a look at the odds for the U.S. Open next week, I would say Rory for sure, knowing the betting public. I would say Rory's probably the biggest one where his odds could change dramatically if he wins this week because he's 14-1 yeah. to yeah. One at DraftKings. Now, that does not mean that that's 14 to 1 everywhere, but at DraftKings is 14 to 1. He's the fourth choice. I believe if he wins this week, I see you losing two to three points. Yeah, maybe even four. Maybe four. Yeah, I could see him getting down to 10. And he has, he's the, defen the two time defending champ at the Canadian Open. Now, it's different courses. But, uh, you know, something about Canada that Rory has liked. He's a, a massive favorite right. this week. So, yeah, yeah I, I'm with you. And I, I don't I don't like Rory. I still don't think his game is where it needs to be to win a major. But if you do want to bet Rory for the U.S. Open, I would do it now because I don't think you're going to get much better than 14-1. to And maybe he gets to, to 16, but I even doubt that. So I, I would just bet Rory now if you want him for the U.S. Open. Yeah, and I, 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 I get you. Uh, but let's also look, not that many people thought even uh, talking about it last week, you know, Rory was still where we kind of felt he was for most people, but I was giving him the benefit of the doubt because he's a great player. And we said this over and over again, it, 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 it doesn't take long that once these guys get something that they found it, then they could, they could really dive into that. And all of a sudden, boom. And so I think what's kind of left with Rory is, yes, no question, a little bit more consistency in his game. He's not the type of player that is going to really choke all that much at this point. Mm -hmm. I still think that he does have some choke in him. I'll say that, but not in Canada. So, you know, maybe that's going to be an unfair representation. But the fact is a win would be huge for him and for his confidence that he won. Yep. And I just think that that could be something that could go a long way. Look, if he wins and he wins ugly, that's different. You know, if we take a look at the stats next week and the stats really don't tell you that he had this really great week, like maybe it might appear that, well, we'll talk about it. But if, if the stats say, you know what, I think, I think it's changed. I think he's got the game now and we know how well he's played at the U S open over the last four years. Uh, then maybe, we would feel a little bit different next week. So the hard part though is, is that we won't really like them if those odds do come down to like 10 or nine to one. We've said that over and over again, but if he stays somehow magically at 14 to one, which we don't think would be the case then, and he wins, then I, I might feel a little bit different. Yeah. Again, I, I'm not going to get to Rory on my card. I don't think he's a bad bet at, at that number right now. Um, as you alluded to, he has four straight top nine finishes at the U S open at this point. Um, and, and you look at his last two starts. So seventh at the PGA and seventh at Memorial, the PGA, the irons were awesome at Memorial. The driver, the off the tee game was awesome. He just kind of needs to you know, marry those two together. So I, you know, he's, he's getting closer. It looks like, um, and obviously these U S open courses tend to set up well for his game. All right. Now, overall, uh, taking a look early and what's, uh, now we mentioned Scheffler seven to one. So if we're talking about the top contenders and look, you mentioned Hovland. So Hovland. Now you said what you, you were able to get Hovland at your sports book at 25. 25 to one on that was on Saturday. Oh, on Saturday. Down. Okay. Got it. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah, because I already have Hovland. Yeah, I already have Hovland on a parlay that came through for me, but that's for the yep. Open Championship. But I was thinking along the lines of what you were saying about the U.S. Open. The pro look, I just 
I'm still looking at it as I, I still believe it more because his resume is better at the Open Championship than the U.S. Open. And mm -hmm. like you said, winning back to back, not so easy, even though his confidence now is at an all time high. Um, I see what you I see what you're saying. Uh, but now it's 18. It's a little bit of a difference if if you haven't taken yep. it yet. Uh, but I have no problem with anybody who wants to go with Victor Hovland, even at 18 to one. Neither do I. I think right now, uh, you know, at a short time span, maybe the last month or two, Hovland's the third best player in golf right now behind Scheffler and Rom. Um, so I, I, I don't think 18's bad. He's a, he's a positive putter on POA. He's had some good performances on the West Coast in the past. Um, he did miss the cut at the U.S. Open last year, but he went 13th and 12th in his first two appearances at the U.S. Open. So now Hovland's a guy I think, you know, as the shine kind of wears off last week's win a little bit, I think you could still get him at a, you know, 20, maybe a 22 next week. So he's not a guy I think you need to like rush to bet at 18 to one. Um, but, but I'm a do, I don't, I, I wouldn't have any, you know, qualms with someone betting Hovland at 18 to one. Again, I think he's the, the third best player in golf right now. Actually on Bavada, he's down to 16 to one. So let's yep. see. I'll just do a quick little parlay here as an example. So let's say you like Rory this week, and you're going to take Hovland next week. So let's do a parlay with Rory and Hovland, and I'll put $2 down, and you can make a little bit over 200 bucks. Not bad. So, again, if you think Rory's going to win this week and you like Hovland next week, just do that. Heck, why would I want to put ten or twenty five bucks yeah. on McElroy uh, when I can do that if you really like Howell next week? Yeah. So I yeah, I'm, I'm just I'm just looking to here if you're listening and looking to bet Hovland, you have access to multiple sports books. He is he's nineteen to one if you have Fanduel. The only thing is, is I mean, keep an eye on. Uh, I don't know, maybe Fanduel does it. I just don't know how many do parlays. Oh yeah, I was, I was just talking about straight up. Straight for up, yeah. I'm not. I, I think you can do parlays on Fanduel, but so it's nineteen to one there. Okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Always, always shop around if you have access to yeah. these books because you'll you'll definitely find differences. Sometimes big differences. All right. So let's see. Also for next week, um, now Shafle, sixteen to one at this point. That's not going to change. It's probably going to stay sixteen to yeah. one. So no rush there. Uh, but Shafle, I wonder, what do you think about, because Shafle, do you still put him in the Cantlay boat as far as <laughs> yeah. no matter how good he looks, statistically speaking, at the U.S. Open over his career, that you just, you're not ready yet, especially at 16-1? to 1? Yeah, 16 is just too short for me. Um I mean, yeah, if he if he gets to twenty two or twenty five next week, I'd be tempted because you know he is a West Coast guy. Um, Poa is his best putting surface. Yes. He's had plenty of success in the U.S. Open. I mean, geez, his U.S. Open record: fifth, sixth, third, fifth, seventh, fourteenth. I mean, he's done he's done everything done everything but win the thing. Yeah. But um, yeah, six. I mean, I, I would rather bet Hovland at eighteen than. Xander at, at 16. Well, again, another situation where same thing. If you like McElroy this week and you were, you would like Shoffle, but not at 16, mm -hmm. do a parlay. You can even do a $1 parlay and make 100 bucks on Shoffle. So yep. do it that way. All right. Uh, let's see. Your boy Homa, 20 to <laughs> 1. And I know this is going to be your pick. And everybody's <laughs> known it here on this program for the past couple of months. So we know what his record is in majors, especially in the U.S. Open. It's all about it being West Coast, L.A. Yep. It's different. He hasn't had the opportunity. Or really, has he? When, well, look, he's been a completely different player in the last year or two. So even if he's played a major like three years ago on the West Coast, I'm not going to compare mm -hmm. that because he just wasn't the same guy anyway. Yep. Yeah, I like Homa next week um and i'm sure i'll stick with him as a one and done pick but i don't think i'd bet him at 20, 20 to one. one yeah yeah 
Yeah, I think he was. Yeah, I think I have him at thirty five. Yeah, that one. was better. I think he was. Yeah. yeah. Are you surprised uh, he's twenty to could, one? I think he's twenty to one because the books have taken a lot of money on him to win this over the past two or three months. That's, so they're that's like, not no, a good sign. We're going to put the truth. I don't like that at all. Well, I, I, they're they're putting him at twenty to one, so they don't take. Yeah, you know, they don't want oh, of course. to have yeah. more exposure to him. So I, they're, I they're just don't like the fact that a lot of people him. like him. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you there. But, you know, again, getting him at 40 to 1 yeah. is you know, a lot different than getting him at 20 to 1. And look, this is what we're definitely going to do a lot more of starting next year, starting next season. So you, you want to be with us uh, from the get-go. We'll, we'll be taking a look at all these futures for the majors early on in the season. Maybe even do because we didn't do it this year. Maybe we'll do like a like a major future show uh, when the season begins, and maybe even every week starting next year we could have like a, a short segment where we take a look at major futures, yep. uh, players to keep an eye on. Because uh, you know, what would you say are your best major futures you've had this year? Uh, Brooks Kepka forty to one at the PGA was pretty nice. <laughs> I, I I honestly don't bet a ton of future it's, it's just when i see a number that stands out it's just sure. like a, it's a bad number i get it um you know because the thing is with these majors a lot of times they're on courses that we're not super familiar with you know outside of augusta obviously these are courses we only see once every five or ten years so like, i i don't usually try to fire a ton until i feel comfortable with what, what the course is and how it's going to play but you know when i see something like brooks when he I, I bet him the it was either the thursday or friday at the masters and he just was playing super yeah. well and that's Brooks Kepka at 40 to 1, so I just decided to hit that. But that's kind of just um, just stay on it. You know, look at those futures numbers every so often, and you'll, you'll, you'll find some gems every once in a while. Uh, what about what about Morikawa? Because Morikawa does have back-to-back top fives. Yeah. Nobody's going to probably – I think he's going to go fly under the radar because he hasn't yep. played all that well. But we know he's more than capable, and he's very good on POA. And he has a mm-hmm. lot of trends going for him. So, look, Brooks Kepka and Morikawa have the same type of uh, mo, and maybe uh, maybe Morikawa will do uh, will pull a Kepka. Yeah. So I still don't think. So I mean, I guess the positive of Morikawa is, like you said, he's a California guy. He won the PJ Championship in California. He That's is a good a one. Good. He's a good poa putter. He's he's actually he's a positive poa putter. He's negative on bent and Bermuda, so that's good. Uh, I I still don't think his game is like you know no. a plus Morikawa game. Plus he withdrew on Sunday at, at the yeah. memorial with back spasms. Yeah, that's not good. So yeah, he he said uh, he he said he thinks he'll be fine for the U.S. Open, but like I I, w- I would not bet him yeah. now. I don't he's like twenty to one. I think. Yeah, I I think you'll get a twenty five on. Morikawa, if definitely you want wait it. on him. Next Absolutely, week. yeah, yep. Wait, don't don't touch him. Can't lay. I wouldn't touch either at sixteen to one. I feel uh-huh. better if I'm going to take one of those guys. I'm taking Shoffle over Cantlay because he me has too. a much better resume. Those are two guys yep, who, who who have that common issue around majors. Yep, uh, closing the deal. But Shoffley's been a lot better resume wise in the majors than Cantlay. Um, yeah, what's Cantley's? What's Cantley's U.S. Open record? I can pull it up right three here. Top twenty five. Really remember him, but his last yeah, but two have been better as, than a fourteen. A, yeah, his last two have actually been decent. Decent, yeah, but I, like I don't. It was fourteenth and fifteenth. I don't remember him like really being in the mix no. in either of those. No. Nope. Uh, let's see. And now we get to and, and, and this other group. You know, this is where you get more value. And yep. that is Jordan Spieth. Um, uh, you know, Spieth's got a lot of trends working for him, but the yep. one that's not working for him is he doesn't uh, uh, f- uh, fare too well on POA. So that's a yeah. bad thing. Yep. Um, I would. Yeah, he's. I mean, he's still he's still a positive POA putter. It's just not his best surface. I would. I would probably go with Cam Smith over Spieth in this group here because. Keep in mind, yeah. Cam Smith, when he won the Open Championship, did not have a top 15 in the Open Championship prior to winning. So when you mm-hmm. take a look at Cam Smith's U.S. Open resume, he only has one top 30. That was a fourth. 
in 2015. So at least he was he had a better result at the U.S. Open. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. And you know he did have a pretty solid PGA, uh, finishing ninth. So yeah, uh, I think he's interesting. Yeah, well, Spieth and Smith are the two guys I wanted to talk about because we'll get more into the course next week. But from the videos I've watched, like the flyovers and some some just you know narration about about the course, it looks wider off the tee, you know, wider fairways than what we usually see at the U.S. Open. Now, I'm sure the rough is still going to be super long, so if you do miss the fairway, it's going to be a problem. But that that's always the biggest concern for me with both Spieth and Cam Smith is they tend to get wild off the tee and usually at the U.S. Open that's going to kill you. I I think they might be able to get away with it a bit more on this course. Um, So Spieth's the one I like among the two. Um, Cam Smith is just, I I just don't, you know, these live guys and I know know, Brooks (laughs) won in spite of, I I just, you know, I don't know exactly where their games are. Spieth continues to play well. He had that wrist thing. No, but, Cam um, Smith's about... still playing well. He's he's definitely playing the best live tour golf that he's played all season. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if that's the case, I do think he's interesting at this course. I do usually wouldn't bet Cam Smith at a U.S. Open. Yeah. But just, just from what I've seen, I think this course might might work for him. Yeah, because actually I asked Jan about that last week, and, and she did feel that Cam, because I was surprised too that she thought that Cam would actually, it's funny. So she thought that, right? And I was like, all right, cool. Mm -hmm. You know, that that maybe I'll I'll consider him. So sure enough, I went ahead and I, uh, uh, one of the, one of the drivers I liked in NASCAR yesterday who won, Kyle Busch, I liked him, but it was like, "Eh, I don't want to put a whole lot of money on him. So I did. So I went ahead and I put a little bit on him to win. And then I said, all right, I'll put whatever. I think I'll put a buck or two on him with Cam Smith. In a parlay. Mm-hmm. So I have actually Cam Smith. What do I have him at? I already have him 500 bucks if Cam Smith wins nice. because of that. Nice. So I only did that because Jan uh, convinced me that uh, <laughs> even though he doesn't have a good history, uh, that he, that she felt that Cam Smith, uh, okay. especially because of his overall game, not necessarily, uh, you know, him, we know he can get wayward on the tee, mm-hmm. but she feels, I guess at this golf course that he'll, you know, that he could still you know, make it work, but we'll talk more about that with her next week. Um, all right. So those are, and, and as far as, uh, and, and, oh, and Jason day could be somebody to keep an eye on. He's got the win. So that's good. He has a good U S yeah. open resume. I know a lot of that is earlier in his career, but he's back to playing better golf. Mm-hmm. And then also the one that I really, really am starting. I mentioned this to you, a couple of times early in the season when we were going over uh, players and matchups, and I, and I mentioned Hideki Matsuyama at the U.S. Open. And now that he's finally starting to show glimpses, I really am starting to think more and more that, you know what? I kind of forgot about that because I think Matsuyama, the trends are all – again, just like Spieth and, eh, you know, Poa, not all that great for Hideki Matsuyama. Definitely worse on Poa than Spieth is. That's what I would be the most concerned with. But he has an underrated U.S. Open resume. And, yep. you know, he's coming in, uh, again, playing a little bit better than he played earlier in the season. And you're getting 35 to 1. So Yeah, 35 to 1 is nice. Um, I'm not sure what happened to him over the weekend last week, but, I mean, the overall numbers were still decent. The irons have been great for a while. The off the tee stuff's kind of been up and down. But, again, you can kind of get away with, with more of that at this course, I think, from what I've seen. Um. Yeah, and and like you said, he's he's not he's not a good Poa putter, but it's it's his best surface. And he's he's horrible on Bermuda. He's not great on Ben. He's pretty much a neutral putter on Poa. So yeah, it's it's a good good spot for him. Um, you know, thirty five to one's fine. It's not a number I'd be like jumping at to hit right now. Sure. I think you might get a you know forty or forty five next week. But um, yeah, I think Hideki does set up pretty nice. And then uh, long shots, uh, the four that I have uh, circled. Mm. Uh, that you could decide whether or not you think these odds are going to come down. Uh-huh. I have uh, Rose and Fleetwood at 60, Scott at 65, yep. and McCarthy at 150. Yeah, well, I guess first for me, 
Sung Jay at 40. Um, now he he's not playing well over the last few starts now. Um, started at the PGA, right? Yeah, PGA yeah. missed cut 40. Or he went on that trip Charles too. Schwab and, yeah, he hasn't been the same since he came back from from Korea. But um, I still just think 41's too big for Sung Jay, so I think that's worth considering. Um, and then Scott's the other guy I wanted to bring up because he's an excellent power putter. Yes. He's like he's like top ten in power putting. Yes. He's not a great putter on the other 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 services. So you want to play Scott on Poa. Um, he's just he's had a nice season. I mean, he came ninth last week. Um, yep. Kind of sneakily didn't even realize that 29th at the pga um two straight top eights prior to that so he's on a really nice run um yeah i think i think he's a pretty good value at 65 yes um that's exactly what i was thinking the putter or the surface matter of fact six top 15s in his last nine u.s opens so he's actually played a lot better later in his career at the u.s open uh, so yeah, yep. uh, I, I really like that one. Um, and you know what? I, I still think, cause you know, you like Rose, you've actually been picking them lately. And, yep. uh, we talked about it earlier in the year and he had got the win. Uh, but I, and we talked about it at the masters and I'm thinking, you know what it, 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 I think because of his resume, he's definitely been a better U S open player than an open championship player. I still think at this point in his career, he could win either. But I think this is his better shot at winning the U.S. Open. So, um, yep. and Bryson, Bryson's still sixty to he one. Still is. I, I, I bet him at that number um, right after the PGA. Um, I, I still think he's he's worth a shot at sixty. All right. And anybody that's really uh, up there, like McCarthy, anyone that's like a real big number that you think? Mike? No, not not as of now. Not as of now. That's probably something we're gonna fight. As I dig more into the course and I see something that you know might fit the course, I might you know hit a bomb or two. But nothing sticks out to me right now. Let's see notable names. Let's see uh, Mickelson, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, Harris English uh, went on that run back to back years. I mean, I'll probably I'll probably end up betting Gary Woodland at a hundred. Gary just Woodland, you know. <laughs> another U.S. Open, you know. two U.S. Open wins yeah. for Gary Woodland. Boy, that would just be great. Gary Woodland it would be two U.S. Opens. All right, so there you go. We're going to talk more about uh, the U.S. Open, a whole bunch about the U.S. Open. Matter of fact, if uh, all goes well, uh, we might even be able to do the show live. Uh, I see no reason why we can't. But we'll just make sure that it ties in okay with Jan because uh, she'll come on for a segment. I'm not going to keep her on. Well, we'll keep her on maybe for more than a segment if we can get the show done earlier in the day on Monday. Uh, so that's a possibility too. So either way, we're going to get a lot of stats in, the usual stats, historical trends, as much as we can do to give you guys. And by the way, since we've talked about this earlier, you know, you've got a whole week now. If you guys out there, if you have anything that you want us to talk about, regarding any any questions that you have regarding specific trends or anything else that we haven't talked about that you would like us to talk about regarding the U.S. Open, a kind of fill in the gaps thing, just let us know, and we'll definitely bring it up on next week's show. Just put it in the comments section, of course, uh, uh, on this video. So, And if you haven't already subscribed, then make sure you do that. Definitely like the video. That's real important for us. Uh, of course, if you like what you see and hear and uh, share it with your friends, too. 